demonstration of the Nazi midget demolition tank captured both in Italy and in France. Loaded with explosives, the tiny tank can be sent against selected targets by radio control. This device appears to be expendable. A larger type can be retrieved by radio after discharging its load of explosives. My name is Jeff Noakes. I'm the museum's Second World War historian. The Goliath Track Mine is developed by Germany during the Second World War. It's intended as a way of dealing with obstacles and threats, including things like landmines, uh, barbed wire entanglements, uh, bunkers, and fortified positions. The idea is to use the Goliath to destroy these with explosives rather than endangering soldiers having to go forward to do it with explosives themselves. Altogether, there's a bit over 7,500 of them are produced during the Second World War. There are a couple of different versions of the Goliath, so there are slight differences in their overall dimensions, but in general they're about a meter and a half long and a bit under a meter in width. Again, depending on versions, uh, the early versions, which were electrically powered, carried about 60 kilos of explosives, and then the later versions would carry 75 to 100 kilos of explosives. It was powered in two different ways. The version that was initially introduced uh, had batteries and electric motors to drive it along. And that was later replaced by a version that used a gasoline engine because that was easier to use and maintain in the field. It's controlled by an operator who had a control panel. And then there was a wire that ran from that control panel to the Goliath and the wire was stored on a big spool at the back that unrolled as the Goliath went forward. And the operator could make the Goliath move forward, move backward, turn left, turn right, and ultimately could also explode the charge on board. Well, that's a really good question, especially for the operator. Um, it's about 600 to 650 meters in length at most. Many countries had an interest in developing remotely controlled or remotely guided weapons. Um, so Germany, for instance, developed larger versions of the Goliath that were actually radio controlled, whereas other countries worked on guided bombs of various sorts that could be dropped from aircraft, or things like homing torpedoes that could home in on ships or submarines. The Goliath had a number of limitations, and the first has a lot to do with its size, and that's basically that if it was on a really um, churned up battlefield with shell craters or with obstacles, it could be really difficult for it to move forward. It also had a relatively limited range, especially the electrical versions. The range could be under a kilometer if it had to navigate difficult terrain. The other major problem it faced is the wire that was used to control it. This was very vulnerable to being cut either deliberately or accidentally. It could be cut by shell fire or if it got snagged on a particularly difficult obstacle. And the vehicle itself was also not really armored, so it could be put out of action um, in any number of ways, again, by, by explosions, by small arms fire. So getting the Goliath to get successfully to its target could be difficult. The additional challenge, of course, is that the operator had to be in a position where both the Goliath and the target could be seen, which meant having to be in a somewhat exposed position while the Goliath drove forward. So that was an additional risk and an additional problem. The Goliath is known best, perhaps not for its military successes, which were relatively limited, uh, but because it's one of the first large-scale introductions of a remotely controlled weapon on the battlefield. And of course it is the predecessor to all sorts of remotely controlled devices of all sorts that pe people can think of, from everything from bomb disposal robots um, up to autonomous or remotely controlled vehicles that we see in modern-day battlefields. The specific example that we see on display in the Le Breton Gallery was transferred to the museum in 1954 from an engineering supplies depot in Petawawa. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Farley Mowat did uh, bring one back to Canada. Um, as many people will know, at the end of the Second World War, Farley Mowat was actively collecting German military equipment for technical evaluation, but also uh, for the War Museum's collection. And among the items he collected was an electrically powered version of the Goliath, which was found in a munitions dump in the Netherlands. It hasn't recently been on display. It's, it's in need of a fair amount of restoration work, unfortunately. I'm interested in it because it is literally the first widespread example of a remotely controlled weapon being used um, on battlefields in active combat. It wasn't notably successful, uh, but it certainly is the first of its kind in many ways and is a sign of things to come.